And my, how wonderful it is. Now, I wouldn't have so much against water baptism if we got the results. Hey, I don't mind if you want to baptize the whole Baptist denomination. You just let me hear him speak in tongues. I want to hear him first in tongues like Peter heard up here. Stand up. Then you can water baptize them all you want to, for all I care. But you see, they'll get the water baptism and they don't get the speaking in tongues. And some of the rest of you get it in infant baptism. Some of you get it in dry cleaning. Some of you get it in immersion. All depends on your background. Doesn't help you one bit. Not one bit. Because you could be water baptized a hundred thousand times and still be without Christ, dead in trespass and sins, without God, without hope in this world. You could act real religious, but sincerity is no guarantee for truth. You must be born again of God's Spirit. That's right. And I want to tell you, Peter was way out of line. If they'd only, if they'd only know this thing, but they don't know because Satan's blinded their eyes. So if you belong to a certain denominational background so you water baptized so you get all the arguments from the Bible to build up your theology. Never fit the word of God to fit. But you know Peter was a what in background? Let's go over it again so you understand it. He was a Jew in background. He'd been brought under up under on the law. And one of the things that he had he had seen under the John the Baptist was this immersion water baptism deal, right? And so when the church got born again of God's spirit, immediately those fellows carrying over the law, they were zealous for the law, they immediately wanted to do what to them? Water baptized. And here Peter saw him speaking in tongues. He said, well, hallelujah, ain't that wonderful? Gentiles, without anybody laying hands on them, without anybody praying over them, there they were speaking in tongues. He said, boy, they got the same thing we've got. We better seal it with water baptism. But just about the time he got to leading them out of the door, I don't think he got quite that far, the Lord said to him, Hold it, Pete. Hold it. Where'd you get that idea of water baptism, Peter? The reason I know that is because it says so in the 11th chapter. Yes, sir, let's read it. So you don't think this is just my idea. What verse? Thank you. And as I began to speak, verse 15, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the what? Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with what? <laughs> That's what he remembered. The first thing Peter thought about after they were speaking with tongues was to water baptize them. But then the word says, after I got to thinking about it, then remembered I the word of the Lord. Before that, it was who? Peter. Peter was. For an idiot that said, we want to hear what God's got to say. That's wonderful. But the action on the water baptism was not what God wanted to say. It was what Peter wanted to do. See how the thing's out of line? And then, God reminded him. God reminded him. And Peter never took him out in water baptism. It says so. Then remembered I the word of the Lord. How then the Lord said, John baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with Numahagio, Holy Spirit. Boy, that's the only way you can walk. You know why we walk the same way? Because all of us have a lot of denominational smudge in our background. Some good, some bad. It's not a question of what we have there. It's a question of walking by the Lord. And if you walk by revelation, if it's out of line, he'll always bring you up the source. If you're walking by revelation and make it living and real to you. You know, get you out of the soup like you did Peter. Sure got Peter out of the soup on this one. Wouldn't that have been a dandy if that thing could have sat there without God? I wouldn't have bothered me very much because I can get rid of it anyway. No problem getting rid of water. It's just the difficulty in getting rid of the people who got their minds stayed on so much water. They got water on the mind, water in the brain or something. That was the one who was got problems. So as far as the accuracy of the word is concerned, no problem here. Then in verse 47, when he says this, he commanded them to be baptized in what? 
the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days, and the apostles and the brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received, decomized the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. Nice, huh? They should have been glad that the Gentiles got saved, but were they? No, not unless they could come in under our flag. Not so. Unless you come in under my denomination or my system, I'm not glad if you get saved or healed or anything else. Not devilish? Real devilish. That's why they had a contention, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised and did eat with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning. He told them all about it from the beginning and expounded it by order. One, two, three. Telling how he was in the city of Joppa praying and in a trance he saw a vision. A certain vessel descended as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners and it came even to me. Upon the which, when I had fastened mine eyes, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth. Who, who did the fastening of his eyes? He did. Who did the considering? You couldn't do that if you were possessed. See how this thing knocks all that spiritualism into a cocked hat? And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and what? But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common that again is undefiled or unclean at any time entered into my mouth but the voice answered me again from heaven what God hath cleansed that call not thou common or, or defiled and this was done three times and all were drawn up again into heaven and behold immediately there were three men already come unto the house where I was sent from Caesarea and, me. and the spirit bade me go with them nothing what moreover these six what a brethren accompanied me, we entered in the man's house, and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to chop and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words, whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the what? Did anybody lay hands on the twelve apostles at the beginning? No. Nope. Neither did anybody lay hands on the men at the household of Cornelius. Then remembered I the word of the Lord that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall absolute tense, not ye will, ye shall absolute be baptized with Numahagion, Holy Spirit. For as much then as God gave them the like gift, not the giver, the gift, as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could what? Amen, boy. Amen. Who am I that I should withstand God? That's why I don't care how you get it, just get it. If you've got to go to the altar and cry your eyes out to get it, you go to the altar and cry until your eyeballs flip out and flip back in. I don't care. If you've got to stand on your head and walk backwards, people, nothing, nothing must stop you from getting the best God's got for you. I don't care how you get it, just get it. That's the and boy, this getting it, a great deal depends on your background, your upbringing, and what you have for supper. Because we are all products of our civilization, of our age, and of our culture, of our environment. And if you're brought up, for instance, in a church where they have altar calls, about the only way you're ever going to get saved is get down the altar. And if you're brought up in a church where they have nothing but confirmation, it takes you to 12 years or 13 to get around to it, about the only way you're going to get saved is confirmation. If they're handing out the words in the meantime. If not, you'll have to come to lay headquarters and get saved after 40 years. Or so. When they heard these things, they held their peace, and they glorified whom? God saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto us. So when they received the Holy Spirit, were they born again? It says so. And when they were born again, they were granted repentance. And when you get repentance, you get remission of us. Amen. Now, any questions? That's all it's due. One of the greatest chapters in the Word of